This is Professor Rudy, and this video is on how to do interpolation and polynomial curve fitting in MATLAB. So I already have a pre-worked example here that I'm going to walk through. Start off with the usual header block and a clear all statement to clear my workspace of all variables. Then in this next section, I am creating my data set. So this is something that you could have determined from a certain experiment um, and you just type the values in here. You could also get this data from um, importing from a file, for example. But either way, this is the data that you've um, obtained from a particular test. Now, if, uh, if I just run this first section, this is just creating the data and plotting the data as circles. So this is what we see. We've got uh, a pair of XY data and this is what that data looks like. Uh, one interesting note here is that there's two points here at x equals 2 and x equals 4 that you would probably expect there to be a value there but we kind of missed that in our measurement. Let's say we forgot to take those data points. Um, and so that might be something that we're interested in in finding is trying to fill those in based on these other measurements that we do have. Um, and that's something we can do with interpolation. Uh, the interpolation function in MATLAB is called interp1 um, and this is something that we can use in order to figure out values within our data set. So that interpolate is looking within the data set. And so we could do this for example, um, let me bring this figure back up, put this here. If we want to know the y value when x equals 0.7 so x equals 0.7 is somewhere in here, and we don't have a measurement there. But that doesn't mean that we can't use these measurements to come up with a guess for what that would be. So um, just kind of eyeballing here, I expect it to be, you know, 2 and a little bit. And we can do this using that interp1 command. What we need to do is this command takes, this function takes three arguments. It's um, one vector and another vector. So this is a, a pairing of data. And the order that we put them in here matters. So what I put here first is what I want to look up. So if I'm finding um, values where x equals 0.7, I need the x values in this first argument. And then the second argument is what I'm trying to get out. So the y data is I'm going to end up with a y value out here. So for this xy pairing, I want to know when x equals 0.7, what does y equal? And that's what this y lookup will be. Once we find this, I wanted to display this um, on the screen in a reasonably nice format. So I'm using this fprintf statement that says when x equals 0, y equals. And this will take a three decimal place floating point number or decimal number. And then this ends the line. And this then is the value that I'm going to put into this placeholder right here. So when I run this, we'll get a display on the screen. Also now we can do this the other way around. If I want to look at the values of x where y equals 3. So when y equals 3, what is x? Well, x is somewhere between 3 and 3 and a half here, but I want to know exactly what I think that is based on these data points. Same command, same setup, but now I need the y value first because that's what I'm going to send into this statement here. And then the x value is what I want out. So this is what you want to put in and this is what you want to get out. And when I do that, I have a similar display statement here. So let's go ahead and run this line of code. And then we see that when x equals 0.7, y is 2.04. So that makes sense. And when y equals 3, x equals 3.167. So I believe that too. So that's a way of looking up specific values that you didn't necessarily have a direct data point on those values. You can find these pairings of information. So that's one use of interpolation. But now, so from that data set, if you remember, we were missing certain points. So at x equals 2 and x equals 4, we had like gaps in there. And we can use this same statement to fill in the gaps. Just like how we looked up a value of x equals 0.7, we could look up that x equals 2 and x equals 4. But a better way to do this is just to give it the values of x that we want. So I just want every 
1 half increment of x from 0.5 to 5, and I want to find all of these. And the interp1 statement can take um, a vector of values here, not just a single value. So I have the x and y data, so this is the raw data, and this is the x values where I want to evaluate that data. And this is going to be complete. It's going to fill in that missing 2 and 4. And then what we get out with it here is a vector of y values. So essentially we get a new pair of data, x new, y new, which is um, a more complete data set in this case because we filled in those gaps. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this interpolation, create a new figure, plot the raw data as circles again, but now I'm going to put this new data in the figure as x's. Then I just have a legend here to tell me which one is which. So let's run this. And now we see I've got the same circles I had before. That's the original data. And now the x's are the interpolated data. And the x's, they're matching up exactly when they're circles, but we're also filling in these gaps here at 2 and 4. Um, and so that's something we can do um, to fill in those gaps. Now this doesn't necessarily need to be something we just do for missing data points like that. We can actually fill in anywhere in between here as well. And so what we can do is we can take this same data set and I'm going to define a new set of x values. I'm going to call this x resample. And I'm going to go from the smallest value in x to the greatest value in x in 0 0.01 increments. So much smaller increments. We're going to get a much finer um, data set. Now one thing, the reason I'm using min and max here for my x is that the interpolate command is only going to give us measurements in between the data that we have. I can't move outside that data set. I can't look at what happens when x is 0.1 or when x is 20 because um, I don't have the information to fill in um, around that. Interpolation uses the data points around it to figure out what it should be. But I can go from the minimum to the maximum and I can do that as fine as I want. So if I do this, it's the same statement as we had before. Um, so it's just x, y, and now I want these new x values to give me these new y values. And then we're going to do a plot again. It's the same kind of plot statement, except now I'm going to do the fine grid as a line, because there would be a lot of x's on the screen. So I'm going to do that as a line instead. Um, so if we now run this section, we get the circles, and now we've got this nice line filling in those gaps. Um, so if we actually put our data cursor on here and look, it's not just one point in there. We've got a lot of different samples coming through here um, to fill in the gaps between the blue data points. And so that's how you can use interpolation to um, basically take your, your data set and come up with more values in between. So next I want to talk a little bit about polynomial curve fitting. Um, and this is another technique that we can use to kind of um, fill in gaps in a data set or, or what we expect that data is, is showing us. And there is a command in MATLAB called polyfit. And this will fit a polynomial to a data set. And all we need to give this command is the x and y data, that same raw data, and then whatever order polynomial that we want. So if we want to fit a line, we put 1. If we want to fit a second order polynomial, 2. Fifth order polynomial, we just put 5 here. And then so if we just run this one statement and look at this value of P1, we see that this is just a vector of two values. And this is what MATLAB uses to represent a polynomial. This vector is coefficients of the polynomial. So this term here is the coefficient of x, and then this second term here is the constant. They go down in exponent. So um, if you had something with a fifth order polynomial, you would have a vector of six values, the x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, and so on down to the constant term. It always counts down. And because MATLAB does this in that standard form, um, it knows how to evaluate this polynomial for certain values of x. So what we can do is if we use this polyval statement that will evaluate the polynomial, so we give it the polynomial p1, and then it will evaluate that polynomial wherever we want it to. So in this case, if we just give it the same x values that we had before, we'll see what um, the 
equation of that line gives us at those data points and that will give us the fitted line y fit one so when we go to plot this we'll have the original data as circles and then at the same x values but then new y values as defined by that line and um, we'll plot this as a dashed line and we'll make these lines a little bit thicker so if we do this part of code this is what we get so we have now the data and then the best fit line that we came up with uh, to fit to that data. And then we can kind of use this the same way we used that interpolation in that if we wanted to know what was going on between one and a half and two and a half at point two, we could use the line to kind of determine um, what we expect that value to be. So that's how we can fit a line. We could also do the same thing and fit a parabola and to do this very little changes here I have changed my variable names just so I don't overwrite my line fit but uh, besides that it's the same and all we need to change is the order of that polynomial so for a second order fit I just put a 2 in my polyfit command and so when I run this and I look at my p2 that is now a vector of three values so the x squared term the x term and the constant term and the polyval statement can handle that it can handle any size polynomial evaluate at those values of x and then we'll plot in the same way so let's just run this and now we have a parabolic curve fit so this is a second order polynomial fitted to that data um, and we can see here that this is a pretty good fit uh, to this data set and it is actually um, how I generated this data it was, it was based on a, a quadratic function so um, with curve fitting sometimes you might want to try different things until you get what you expect is is a good fit to work off of or sometimes you're working off of a known equation if you know it's supposed to be a quadratic relationship you want to use that particular order um, but again just like the line fit we now have values of a function that we could use to evaluate at any point of x along this curve um, and that curve is defined by the polynomial p2 in this case and we can use polyval to evaluate that curve wherever we want um, so just like how we did with the interpolation if we wanted x at point seven we could do this we could do polyval of p2 point seven and that will give us what we expect that value to be for from the polynomial curve fit so now we're not working off of the data but we're working off of the function of that curve that best fit to the data um, so these are two different techniques um, so this was uh, kind of an introduction to interpolation and polynomial curve fitting thank you